Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. This is Todd with Industrial Comfort. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this jig in about five minutes that's gonna allow you to add spline joints to your box corners, which are gonna help you add structural integrity while also making your box joints look pretty awesome. Very easy project, takes almost no time, and you're gonna love the result. So let's get started. One of the reasons I love this jig so much is it's easy to make and you can make it from stuff you have lying around the shop. So this was all material that was scrap. I didn't cut it. It was just stuff I had laying around. I have two pieces of um, two by six. You can use two by fours. You can use one by fours. Whatever you have lying around the shop, as long as it's going to be wide enough to accommodate your workpiece. Similarly, I'm using a three quarter inch piece of plywood and you just want to make sure that it's substantial enough to ride along the fence to support your workpiece. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut 45 degree bevels into these pieces of two by six, and then we'll affix them to this back plate. Before we move on to the next step, I want to explain why we cut 45 degree bevels in these pieces of 2x6. Now the objective is that we want to lower our workpiece as much as possible to the top of this table for two reasons. The first of which is the lower the center of gravity, the more stable the jig is going to be. And then secondarily, the lower the workpiece, the less we have to raise the blade for safety purposes. Now if I didn't make bevel cuts on these two pieces of 2x4, as we bring the 90 degree angle together for the jig, you can see the only thing making contact are the corners right here. So there's not a lot of surface area stabilizing the jig, as opposed to the 45 degree cuts, which actually provide a fairly tremendous area surface area on the bottom here to stabilize the jig as we move it back and forth on the top of this table. Now for the next step, I'm going to laminate these pieces of wood to this piece of 2x4. Now for obvious reasons, I'm not going to use nails or screws because the last thing we want is for this blade to be hitting steel. Before we glue the pieces of 2x6 to this piece of plywood, we're going to find the center point, which in this case is going to be 8.5 inches. So we'll measure the center line up. And then what we're going to do is mark our 45 degree angle which is going to get us our 90 degrees. And the corner of our workpiece is going to sit right in here. Now we'll take this over and laminate the wood blocks to this piece of plywood. I'm simply going to add the wood glue. And I'm just going to make sure things are lined up. And then we'll clamp this in place. After it's clamped, I'll wipe away any excess glue on the inside here. While the glue is drying on the jig, I'm going to cut the splines that we're going to use for these joints. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to use joints that are single passes on this saw. And so what we need to do is identify the, the kerf or the width of the saw blade. And I've gone ahead and taken a pass on this piece of wood and measured it out. And it's, a, it's an eighth of an inch. I knew that these blades were an eighth of an inch, but I'd rather measure twice and, and cut once. So the next step is for us to align the fence on this table saw to get a clean cut on this piece of wood. Then what we're going to do is double the kerf of the blade. So we're going to take an eighth inch, double it to a quarter inch. That will allow us to get a cut that will leave us with an eighth inch material because an eighth of an inch of material will be taken away by the saw blade as we make the cut. 
As you can see, we've got a perfect fit with that cut. And once the glue is applied, this wood will actually expand and make a nice tight fit. The glue is dried on our simple jig, and this is it. We're gonna use this to glide our workpiece across the top of this table saw. Now, I've made this test joint to show you, or a corner I should say, to show you how this is gonna work. And I've got some purple heartwood scraps from the previous step when we cut these splines that we'll use for the joint. So let me show you how easy it is to use this to create some really cool joints. To set up and use this jig as a piece of cake, we'll put our work piece in the jig and we'll bring it to the outer edge here. And the reason that we're doing that is that we wanna gauge the height of the blade. So in this particular case, the blade is a little high, so you never wanna cut through the corner here. So what I'll do is I'll lower the blade a little bit and the deeper the cut, the larger your spline joint is gonna be. From here, what I'll do is back the workpiece against the back frame of this jig, and then I'll slide the uh, fence forward. Now, for this particular piece of work, I've got a three and a half inch wide um, corner here, and so I just have to make sure that as I'm placing the workpiece on the table for cuts that I'm accounting for this extra three quarters of an inch as we set the fence before the first cut. So we'll do that. I'm going to make three passes to create an asymmetric um, number of joints on this corner and I'll show you how we're going to do that. Okay, I'm going to put the workpiece in the jig and for safety purposes I'm going to use a clamp to keep it in place. I'm going to turn this on and we'll make our first cut. With the first cut made, I'm now going to adjust the fence and make my second and third cuts. Okay, it's time to glue in our spline joints. Now, I mentioned in the step before that I was gonna use these purple heart scraps. Now the challenge is, and I wanna make sure that I'm mentioning this so that you don't get caught with the same issue, is that these are not tall enough to fit into the depth of these joints. So you'll notice that the cut leaves about a 16th of an inch from the top of this spline to the corner here. So. I had to swap these out for some walnut splines, which will glue in place. I also have a rubber mallet on hand. Depending on how tight the fit is with these joints, you may need to just tap them in place to encourage them to uh, get all the way to the bottom of the joint. I'm gonna liberally coat these. Because if there is any space you want the glue to sort of ooze in there and replace any voids. Okay, there's one. This one's a little more finicky, so we're gonna help it get into place with this mallet. 
Okay, I'm gonna come back with a wet rag just to wipe away the excess glue, and we'll let this dry and we'll cut and sand the uh, corner. The corner splines have set, so I'm gonna use the bandsaw here to remove the excess material before I use my random orbital sander to do the final finish. Now, you can also use a small saw like this. You can use a jigsaw. There are a number of other things you can use to get this material off, but you'll wanna remove the majority of it of it before we move on to the final sand. I'm gonna start with 120 grit sandpaper to knock down this extra material, and then I'll move up to 220 and then 320. Applying the final finish and bringing this color to life is always my favorite part. Look at that walnut just pop. Look at how great these joints came out. And as you can see, it is so easy to do this and it gives you such professional looking results. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.